cool, cool, cool. Look like it's gonna be a nice little countdown. <laughs> yeah, man. Internet, internet, internet. I'm glad we ain't on TV professionals, boy. Virtual. Right, right. All right. All right. What? What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Nightcap. It's your boy Will and Kells. We back at it oh. once again, once oh. again, oh. once again. We about to hit y'all with the current events this week and see what's um see what's good with it with some um, great conversation. Trying to you know build up and hopefully we can enlighten each other and we can grow. Ain't no sense of us um just wasting time. You know what I'm saying with BS. So um man, Kells um. I think one of the biggest things, um, before you even started, man, with all that, bro, how you doing this week, man? I'm doing okay. I'm blessed. I would not. Blessed? I'm blessed. Got some trials and tribulations we're going through, but uh, we'll get through them. We'll be okay. Yeah, yeah man. Bless. It seemed seem that we building a little bit. We got a few people coming in on Facebook. We thank y'all for coming in. I can't really tell who it is. We're still stepping our game up on the production side to see who that is. But um, please be patient with us. We're trying to get the chat going, too. But I'm good too, Kells, man. A uh, lot of big news this week and uh, with the um, as far as politics, just day to day life. A couple oh. things I want to touch on, man. Um, I think uh, one of the first things I know you had an opinion on. I'm gonna let you build on it. Is the Rashard Brooks situation and um, what happened this week? Yeah, yeah, that was kind of that's kind of crazy. It's uh, it's really a mirror into it's really us looking in the mirror and it's really a mirror into our own self. Or would not, uh, you know, when I when I saw that Rashawn Brooks tape, it kind of hit it kind of hit home with me because that, and I hate to even say it, but that could have been any one of us. The whole interaction, or would not, uh, could have been either one of us, or would not. Uh, I, I I feel like we. Let me just say, straight up talk. I don't understand where we what we. Uh, let let go of the fact that the police. Where, where's the empathy, basically? Yeah. Let them watch that whole thing or whatnot. The, the the everything that they showed as far as him talking to the police and the two officers and everything. He was cool, calm, collected. Like it depends. Even when you it crazy. Even when you drunk, this when you when the police knocking on your window, that's over you real quick or whatnot. Right. No I digress though, but uh. With everything being said, he passed the sobriety. He passed. The, he passed the sobriety test with with all the bull, bullshit ass finger waving that he did for like twenty minutes or whatnot. He did the walking test. He did all the good stuff. He was a little bit over the limit or whatnot, which did constitute the why he was wrong in that in that account. But he had already explained to them because you know he's sitting there talking to him like me and you would be talking to the police. He had already sitting there explaining to them that his sister house is right down the street. It was right down the street. He could leave his car right there in the parking lot. He could walk to his sister's crib. My thing is, again, where is the empathy, right? Because that could have been somebody you know as a police officer. To the police officer, this could have been somebody you know. If this was somebody one of your own, if some one of your own inside of the department, and this was this was this was, this was happening to them, you'll want that person. You'll want that officer to call you first, so you can just get out of that jail. Why can't the average citizen get that? There's no criminals when they see them or whatnot, for the most part. You know what I'm saying? They talk to no one when, when people are lying to them and all kind of good stuff. So where was the empathy? They could have let that man walk to the house. You already got his ID and everything. Could have let that man just go to go to that. None of that, none of that had to happen. Or yeah, whatnot. They, we all to you. They were so in the rush. They were so in the rush. They just wanted to take him to jail. But when I'm looking at it, it is it was just so they be so gun ho to take him to jail. Sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes you don't have. Sometimes you don't even have to go that route. Sometimes you don't. In this case, I don't even think he had to go that route. But even if they did, and he went and re and the scuffle ensued, and he ran away, you got all his information. Yeah. You don't have to kill that man. But it could have been all avoided. Well, it's the empathy. How many people? How many people? Police don't pulled over for for, for whatever reason, and they've been really like generally good people, like just coming home from work or just. On the way to work or to the job or what or whatnot, and you just gonna mess up this whole person's life. Day, you know, just so you just pump people into the system, the system that that that, and it's all about money. Yeah, oh, that's, oh. All, that's what I'm saying. Where's the empathy? Yeah, man, I think that's one of the big things. It's a lack of empathy. Um, you know, you try to 
be objective and be open-minded when it comes to like police and like the risks that they have when they when they go to work every day. Um, but in situations like this is when you really look and see like, man, y'all couldn't take my man's home. Like y'all just had to like, <laughs> for y'all, real? Had, y'all had to get the ticket, bro. Like it's really that serious. It's, it's really like, that serious to arrest that man. And it's like, if you come in from a place of help, it's a place of help. And it's just like the systems that we got set up, man. It's more about punishment. And so like, I'm learning the different change that with me being a father, like growing up the way that we grew up, um, it was a lot more punishment. And so like, in a sense, um, people always thought that that brought out like true discipline. And I think it's kind of like a combination. You do have to get into kids' ass, into people's ass at times. Um, but it's still a certain way you do it in a loving fashion. And um, mm-hmm. dude trying to get home, you know, the officers trying to get back to their families. They probably ain't gonna look at it like that, man, because of the system being fucked up. But we look at those people to be leaders, to be the change that we want to see. And police officer is a position where I consider you a leader because at all times you both would be the guy to do the right thing and both make sure that the right thing get done. Yeah. So it's just interesting to see like the change and the shift. How do you feel about them bringing all the charges that they did bring and in the manner everything happened and like the, the um, what is it? The police uh, chief or the superintendent, whoever the damn police officer, the main person stepped down. How do you feel about uh, like, all those things? Uh, the police, yeah, the superintendent stepped down. Yeah. I'm, I like the charges. Uh, I know it's a lot of people out there saying that they probably overcharged them or whatnot, but I'd rather you overcharge them than because we already know how this goes and how hard it is to charge a police officer with any crime and convict them of any crime. All them charges, some better stick or whatnot. But I just, I I really feel like true justice is, is, is treating that person like if me and you committed a murder, you already know what's gonna happen to us. That should happen yeah. to that man too, or what not. They sat there and kicked the man afterwards, stood on the sh- stood on the shoulders while he bleeding. Somebody I got him after he just after the man just shot him. He told yeah. me I got him. The other dude stood on the shoulders, then and waited over two minutes to, to, to call for medical aid. So what dude you think? shots and then he hit another hit another motherfucker that was sitting in a, in a, in a, a silver truck next to next to him. So what you think about the um the whole tussle and dudes taking the um taser, taking a taser. And yeah yeah i mean this is so this is gonna be the 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 argument that the police are going to make right he felt his life was in danger because he was running away and shot at him with a taser but beforehand this is why i said early off top it did escalate when mr brooks you know switched away from him or whatnot i mean snatched away from him because he didn't want to get arrested you mm-hmm. already know how, how many times you get pulled over at least and like, or you get stopped at or mess with by the police, and you be like, "Oh my God, it cannot! This cannot happen to me today, right?" Right. You know what I'm saying so. He just didn't want to go. He didn't want to go to jail that day. He had already explained his his daughter's birthday was coming up. He didn't want to go to jail. He was like, "Man, I'm not going to take this." And mm-hmm. by law, they was supposed to read. They was supposed to read him his rights and tell him why he was being placed under arrest before they try to apprehend him. But they did that. That's just a technicality part. But they did. The, they tried to. They tried to apprehend him first. So in my mind, I'm thinking, what the hell is you trying to? Are you trying to? Is you putting me on arrest for what, what? What's going on? Or what not? Because you yeah. haven't told me technically. You haven't told me why you're arresting me. Or what not? But mm-hmm. that's gonna be the chatter, That's gonna be the uh, the defense that they're gonna run with. Yeah, that I think. I he think he listed arrest and he ran away and he tried to he tried to. He, I fear. I fear for my life because he's shooting the taser at me, even though he couldn't even really aim it because he's just trying to get me off of his ass. I think after the whole tussle and everything go down, I think things get very complex. And, you know, that's when the heightened emergency and the danger, the sense of danger pop up. Um, I don't know, bro, like it's it's interesting, man, to see that they didn't, like you say, take a more human human approach to the situation. You see this man as a citizen instead of a person. Yeah. That's right, the culture right. that we try that that needs to permeate through police. Yeah. Stop seeing us as perps when you pull us over or you stop us for whatever reason or you yeah. coming up on us for any, any reason. And see, as a yeah. citizens, because when you don't have on a gun or badge or whatnot, you're a citizen as well. So is so, it, so is it that you want them to see it? Because like what I what I always believe, man, is you can't change nobody's heart, but you can't control their behavior, right? So like you gotta treat me as such. Like you might still not think or see me like that. But your actions, bro, gotta 
be to a certain standstill. Like you can't pull your gun out. Like mm-hmm. you might have you might have your hand by your gun or be quick to get to that mark. I ain't gonna knock you for that because you're protecting yourself. But yeah. don't make me uncomfortable by grabbing your pistol, or having your hand on your gun automatically. Threatening, you know what you know I'm saying? Been, automatically. You know how many times we've been in the car? As soon as you look out the door, the police on you with the like, what what is going on? Like, like, come on now. Yeah. I will not. But we got a, a quick comment from uh from Mike. You screw the guy, you already know what it is. He's like, uh, if you think about the cops boycott, essentially boycotting in Atlanta and protest, mm-hmm. you know, uh over, cop over these guys, over these guys uh getting getting fired and charged. Yeah, man. You know, I don't like it at all. I'm just gonna say I don't like it at all. I'm gonna let you get I'm I don't like it at all. It's, I think that's, that's you breaking the oath of your office. So what you mean as far as like you don't like them walking out in protest? Come on now. Y'all man, y'all I, I know police, I know you gotta stick together or not. And I know mm-hmm. everybody saw the tape clear as day. Mm-hmm. Or not. Everybody saw it. I mean, some things is just not not gonna say not negotiable, but right is right. You saw what was going on. For them two officers to get fired, some something, I mean, yeah, something was something was wrong, right? So for you to sit here and walk out on your job and yeah. after you don't took an oath to protect things and serve the community. Uh, it's wrong. That's the so, whole purpose of you being a cop is to protect and serve the community. So, so real quick, uh, go ahead, slide, in, go ahead. slide in real quick. So a lot of them was walking out because them cops felt like it was BS charges, like, you know what I mean? That, that the system basically failed them. And so they walked out. Like, so what I'm seeing right now, man, is that you're going to have these lines that's going to become very clear, these great areas. And, you know, we got brothers that's working as cops you know you see videos you see these people calling them sellouts and shit like that and you mm-hmm. see like man like ultimately it's gonna come back to a person being able to for them and theirs bro and that's the craziest thing about it i'm pretty sure it's brothers that's on the other side that want to be on our side as far as the fight but they have to represent on the other side because that's what pay their bills and take care of their family and their livelihood and i'm pretty sure it's a lot of cops who's probably quit in the midst of all this and you know, found different types of employment or careers within the within the, the scheme of things like just getting this bad, like fuck this, I ain't gonna be I ain't gonna be a part of this. So my hands up or with a SpongeBob, like all right, I'm gonna head out. But like with that being the case, bro, it um I don't mind it. I think like destruction should happen in a sense. Like if the systems ain't been working and reform ain't been working, now you see like when they jumped on my side quickly the cops protested and, and ran out you know what i mean and just walked out so like you see that people gonna play their cards how they can play them so let it play out and then at the end of the day you're gonna find something that's gonna have to work for all if anything gonna work it's similar to like when people talk about the protests like protests fuck up shit like you gotta resolve it to get it to go right you see what i'm saying so it's in the same situation as that um i just um hope the best for the families and the people that's out there that um that's gonna need for protection and hope that other people around them step up and help protect them and they stay safe. And that's that's the first part. kind of the main thing. Don't don't do that. Just be the change. Be the, be the change that we're asking and protesting for you to be. Just be the change. Don't be the person. Don't don't be the impediment. To yeah. don't be impediment to 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 to, to positive change. To, to to the change that we need. Be the change. Stay on your job and do your job. This is what taxpayers pay you for. Yeah, man. But you already know, man. With that being the case, it's a certain system that they already used to being under and a certain, you know, what they say, the code, the blue code, they got their own, they own code. So like, that's just a part of it, man. Like I can't ex- ex- think that somebody is going to not think about the livelihood of their family, bro. And it's crazy. It's like, I might choose I to do something that. different, but it's like to look at you and look at something different. So, um, uh, Man, we can slide over a little bit. We can go into the um, NBA, bro. So, like, the NBA, they've been very vocal about this. And it's crazy to me the reason why that I do bring up the NBA. Like, the NBA is one of the places, even, like, with Colin Kaepernick and football, sports entertainment, these people are able to reach the masses quicker than, you know, so say a regular person can or, you know, a regular person from day to day that's not on TV like that or in the media like that. And the, um, the players – decided to come back, but then a certain selection, a group of players actually spoke out about not coming back to playing, saying that it'll be actually speaking against the movement. So um, uh, Kyrie Irvin is one of the main players that they had speaking out. Dwight Howard is another player that spoke out. Um, it was a little tension earlier too, like Stephen A. Smith, 
he threw some shots out. And he's basically just saying, that, like, with Kyrie, like, man, if you're going to take a protest, like, really have a plan in order to have a stance. And then uh, Stephen Jackson chimed in afterwards to really, like, you know, try to give him another perspective and say, yo, we really more about taking the stance. And um, it's just funny you even see, even down when I say about drawing these lines and seeing what people at, Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson got a different opinion on should the players come back or should they play. So I don't know, man, with all that being pushed all in together, the basics of it is that the NBA players, should they come back or should they sit out? What should they do in your opinion? How much effect would they have, you know, by doing either route? I think they should, I think they should come back. And I mean, not only selfishly for my entertainment purposes, because they do provide, like you said, they do provide a platform to be heard and for change. And maybe the people that who was who who who, who felt as if their careers were on the line if they decide to speak out and protest, like Colin did, or whatnot, and the few people that did with him, they got covered now, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Everybody got covered now because of what's going on. So ain't no reason why. You shouldn't be up there using your platform if you have one and choose. I mean, if you if you have one, okay. I'm just gonna say choose. I'm just gonna say choose to have because everybody. It's a free country. People do what they want to do, but it's expected of you to use your platform if you've been if you believe in this if you believe in the, in the cause. You know, what I'm saying if you believe in racial and, and racial and racial uh, equality or whatnot, plan is going to help in that cause because you, people are there's nothing else to look at, right? And nothing mm-hmm. else to look at. So everybody gonna be watching the watching the league, or whatnot. So how many more people you gonna see? How many more people you gonna be able to reach, or whatnot? They don't want to watch the news all day, but they gonna watch LeBron. They gonna watch LeBron. They gonna they gonna, they gonna watch James Harden. They gonna watch Russell. You know what I'm saying? They gonna watch all their favorite players. So, and they can be they can watch Steph Curry and they and they and you know you know you already know they are going to be using their platform. To wear the I can't breathe T-shirts and to and to get not even that and just to keep pushing the plat and keep pushing the message forward and more yeah. and the more people you can get to to watch and not in, in uh and see your message mm-hmm. change stars. We talking. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you, man. I think um that the players should come back. I think the game should go on because it can push it down their throat even harder. I think um like certain um ideas I've heard out there, they talked about not even having their names on the back of the jerseys, but having Tamir Rice, Breonna Taylor, Fidel, uh, Fidel Castro, what did I say if I say Fidel? Man, Philandro, what's his name? Philandro uh, Castillo. Philandro Castillo, I'm about to say Castro. Yeah, it's about a power, that's a powerful, yeah. that's a powerful message. Powerful yeah. Message. But you know what, I think that's, I think that's more impactful. Like certain players who decide to sit out, depending on who it is, that could be impactful too. You know what I mean? Like, I think like it could be touched at from multiple levels. And I think that the NBA already is going to jump ahead and be on it like that. That's because that's what they do. Like and they don't play though. My, my yeah. thing is if you don't want to play, you don't have to play. I wouldn't, I mean, but like Austin Rivers said, I like this point. It'd probably be better if you did play. Cause then if you really want to you know, you really want to, this has been, this has been this thing. Uh, why have been telling me about it? I'm like, Open that purse. When people getting bullied. <laughs> when people getting bullied into, uh, you know, just give it to the give it to the cause. If you've been right. like, you rose and rose to fame off our backs, right? Right. So why well, I don't agree with the method, <laughs> but, but uh, hey, it is what it is. That's straight I, up. Honestly, we agree. Right. Agree on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't uh, agree with the method. Mm. I do. Agree with that. If they play, they have money and capital, more capital to put towards the cause. Right. Or not. I mean, not only are you getting the message out, but now you have, you know what I'm saying? It's like they didn't have the income at, at first. But I'm saying, but you can style, you got you got you got cash to support the cause as well financially, which is yeah. what's needed as well. Yeah. So it's a win-win on both sides if you're looking at it from that standpoint. I think they but should if go. They don't want to play, that's okay. That's okay yeah. too. They stay right. What I think came out of Kyrie doing that, though, a good thing to look at is that they got a little bit more leverage now because, like, it's a it's a little uneasy feeling that if all your players going to show up to Orlando, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now you could come back and say, hey, we want this, 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 and this. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing about negotiation. When you got leverage, 
you don't let it go. Like you don't let it go. That's one of the key things to dominate and coming out with the best thing that you can come out with. Like when you got that boy, yeah, bro. Okay, you know, go ahead, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? You both are, you both are press it all the way out and get everything out of it that you can. And I think by sitting out, they don't, you know what I mean? By making demands about playing, they will because there's a bottom line to be met. Like, because everybody want to make money, baby. Bro, they just signed that deal not too long ago. You know what I mean? A TV deal. And they got to hit those amount of games to make sure that they get that money, sponsors and all. So it's just like, okay, put us in. You know, I mean, um, Money and finances, bro. Like I got blown away, and it's kind of like a little sidebar. But like how I understood, like how serious money is. I used to always go into the um, treasury uh, meetings at the church after church, and they used uh-huh. to uh, they used to count up the collection plates. So I was an usher, so I used to take the collection plates and make sure the money and all that stuff made it in there. And one of my mentors, he was on the treasury board, your treasury board. You know what I mean? And uh, Man, I just was seeing them how they was counting money and people was writing down tax and everything. And I just seen the business to it. And I'm just like, I'm thinking like, man, this this God's house. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, they doing business in God's house. Like, yeah, bro, business don't stop. So when I learned that at a young age, it was one of those things to say like, okay, it's going to be like that everywhere, bro. Like, it is what it is. And ain't nothing wrong with it. I think that's, that's a part of it. You know what I mean? It's a part of like an essential thing that you need to do is how to regulate business because that keeps uh-huh. you going. You know what I'm saying? So yep. to see the NBA do it and see the players get something out of it is good. I think as far as labor negotiations across the board, I think the next NFL's uh, CBA deal going to be real good. I think it's going to work out real well for the players. They not guarantee money that they don't have or whatever. Yeah. I think a, I think a lot of that's going to change, bro. I think a lot of that's going to change. And it's good if they keep the pressure on the floor. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. But that's like... Like I said earlier, everybody got cover now. So yeah. you got a grievance to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm man. Cover now. I just I just wish these same people, you know what I'm saying? Like uh these same players who are all sitting all talking about sitting down and whatnot. I wish they would have came out earlier or whatnot. Before mm-hmm. all this, before everything, because because these problems already persisted way before yeah. that happened or whatnot. You still could have been using your platform then. Hey, yeah. I'm not gonna sit down. I'm not gonna play if y'all don't start donating. This the NBA is a, is purely a players' league. Right. If players would have just banded together and did this beforehand. It is. Just, it'll just look more. I know. I know it's genuine, but it just yeah. looked better to me. I would not. Yeah, I so, feel you, man. Because they like have that. the power to do that. Now they got cover to do this. It's okay yeah. to do it now. It's it different. Like- That's why you can't put. <laughs> I feel in Muhammad Ali and Colin Kaepernick's category because they right. did it when it was not when it was not popular. Right. So I think um I think like you said, like you was talking before, man, it's a perfect storm now. So that's it, why they, they feel more comfortable. And a lot of them feel challenged. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's great that you talked about that, man. So we're gonna ease a little bit off the NBA and we're gonna slide a little bit in. Now we wanted to have um some young ladies come on. But I guess for some reason it didn't work out. But I did receive some questions and some comments from some young ladies because we wanted to have a discussion about the black male. So as we curve into that, um, we got a situation uh, because J. Cole put out a song, right? So mm-hmm. J. Cole, J. Cole put out a song called um, Snow on the Bluff. And um, in this song, um, it's basically um, him talking about him not being woke all yeah. the way on certain situations, people looking at him. Um, one of the main things people took away is that he was coming at a young lady um, by the name of No Name. That's kind of like the theory behind everything. He really didn't say it was, but as I listen to the song, I take it as that, that he was coming at Shorty. Because it's hip hop, man, and subliminal messages right. have, subliminal messages and shit like this happen all the time. It's hip hop, bro. That's what mm-hmm. a hip hop artist does. Um, some of the main things that, um, that I took away from it was that Buddy humbled himself um, but he's basically talking about, you know, watch how you talk to people, watch how you talk, and don't talk over people, and don't talk mm-hmm. down to people. Um, some of the things that I've came into knowing now that I didn't know from before is that, you know, the uh, that whole rape culture and the misogynistic uh, level of life that we've been used to living in is, you know, it's coming to a change and people are very outspoken about it. Um, I've never been a fan of it. Um, been a victim of a lot of things and probably just fell on the circumstance product of the environment. 
But like, you know, once you come across certain things that you know, you tend to like change, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's because you, you, you just choose to do better. Um, with that being the case, man, you see that these conversations is happening within that song. So not to so much dwell on the back and forth on the song, but really what I took away from it is that we need to work on, you know, how we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Chance came back at, um, at J. Cole and he basically um, called him out and said that um, he thought it was constructive criticism, but he was basically being um, misogynistic about the whole thing as far as like the way he was talking to him, what way he's talking to her, and basically that it, it kind of um, like shits on her whole movement. And that he just wished that it wouldn't happen like that and that he was cool with both of them. But I do commend Chance for stepping up. You know, I think in this time that, you know, you see a lot of black women feeling like we don't have a back, you know what I'm saying? And um, and that we don't hold them down and step up with things and situations like that. We even like we talked about last week with Terry Crews not backing up Gabrielle Union within that situation. And I think that's what this did is like it kind of showed me that you gotta look at who you looking at. Like you're looking at Chance, a person that's respectable, you know, honorable person that's always been about and showed you that consistently. And then we can look at Terry Crews and his many little faults that he's had over time. So like, I wouldn't waste time looking at Terry Crews to be the example, but Chance to be the example. When it comes down to the J. Cole thing with him, man, he was just being honest. And I think that when we are honest, we can't do that in a safe space without everybody you know, get, getting defensive and wanting to come back and snap at you. Now, if somebody hurt my feelings, I can convey that without trying to hurt their feelings and come back at them and down them. You know what I'm saying? And even Chance, and I'm going to let you jump in, but Chance made a line like um, that we grown and women shouldn't have uh, spoon feed us. And I don't think that's the case. I don't think men want to be yeah, spoon fed. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty perplexed about that one, but okay. Yeah, I don't think men want to be spoon fed, but at the same time, we do like basic things. So, we don't like things to be complex. And that's on the other side of women. They, you know, what I've gathered is that women like that you are more detail oriented and that you dive into complexity when it comes to certain things. So that's always gonna be a challenge. So in regards to like us moving forward, like, man, a long time ago, when I kind of woke up from Christianity, I had a certain opinion of people that was still under Christianity. You know what I mean? And it took a long time for me to shape that in the way that I voiced myself about Christianity and how I view people who follow Christianity. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a, a, a situation where I could say to myself that I was like, man, I was talking down to people and I wasn't a, a getting across to people and even trying to have the conversations that I wanted to have because I was looking down on them. And so that's exactly what bro was talking about. People can take it how they want to afterwards, but what is that doing? That's basically slowing up the progress that we're trying to make from dealing with that and moving forward. Wow. But on you, bro. You're absolutely right. I'll just add a couple more things or whatnot. Just first off, tone matters. Tone matters. How do you want to put it? Tone matters. People get killed every day out here because they use the wrong tone with somebody. <laughs> I'm stupid. Put the wrong tone. You know how we is as men. You feel disrespected all of a sudden. It's time to shoot a nigga. Right. You, you, you like really, right. you really aggressive right now. <laughs> tone matters. I'm, I'm doing that on purpose, bro. I'm doing that on purpose. Tone matters. Oh, no. Tone matters. If I don't, if you can't get your message across to me, if I ain't, if you ain't telling, if you ain't, if you ain't giving it to me in the, in a way that I that I, that I want that I want to hear it. Right. You you. I mean, I'm not gonna hear your message if I, if your tone is off. Mm -hmm. you know how you are when you going for that job interview. When you talking to your boss or whoever whoever you talking to. When you want to get something that you want. Or need tone matters, or we're not. So, <laughs> in this in this respect, I, I'm truly I'm truly messing with what J Cole said, and I love the fact that he like went behind, stood, went back, went came out and said he mm -hmm. stood behind what he said instead of you know just going back to the just going back and saying he's sorry or not. He stood behind what he said. This yeah. is a man who's already been like on the front lines. He's been talking about these issues for years, but he even knew. He even knew that he still had more to learn. He even, right. said, he even said he was open to constructive criticism. No way that I feel like he was putting her down, but instead, instead, pointing out facts of how we are. Now I mentioned it all the time with the Willie Lynch letter. How, of course, in the midst of we all supposed to be together, we 
arguing and fighting about this or having different opinions about this and taking our taking our taking take your eyes off the prize or we're not. Yes, tone matters. Tone matters a lot. Like <laughs> for the simple fact, I'm like, come help us. You're supposed to be out here protesting. You're supposed to be doing doing all the I ain't even hearing nothing you saying. But brother, right. listen, we need you for the cause, man. We need you. Anything you could do to help. Help us be the change. Well, I, and it's even more, it's more intellectual ways of coming across things. Like even if you place situations of people, even giving them something to ponder and something to think about, I think that that gives more because people ain't gonna move and change until they're ready. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like you can you can try you to do all the to where they are. So man, ain't elevated and educated as, as you are. That's what he best basically saying. So instead of talking down on us and telling us what we need to be doing, enlighten us. He so, even and told people to follow her. Right. I think um like, I didn't know well, I stop it. I didn't know nothing about Shorty into this. And so like, yeah, I did go follow her mm-hmm. afterwards. And, that, and that's what enlightened it. Right. We know about J. Cole, but we didn't know about her. Right. And that's the crazy part. Because we should have. Right, that's true. She, she, got books on, she got she got books on Instagram and all kind of good stuff. But yeah. we should have known. But we didn't. So it brought light. Yeah. It brought light. And and it, it brought light to something that didn't even have light on it at first. And I think um I think um like the way we communicate and things. So I seen somebody say that DJ Academics has something to do with everything kind of been uh, back and forth. Now we haven't, I haven't seen her response. I'm gonna check out what she put out and see what she um, said, but um, I'm gonna check into it. But it, it's, it's interesting though, like to see that like DJ Academics, I guess some people say that he kind of beefed all this up and hyped all this shit up to get to the point to where it was at. And that's what Buddy do. That's that's kind of what he do if he did that. I wouldn't be surprised because that's what he do. Um, but the conversation still need to be had, and I think that's what art is. I don't think we should judge art to the to the point where we come in at somebody because hip hop has always been like that. If that's the case, we need to go way back and talk about a lot more songs that people came at other folks in sideways <laughs> on different opinions when it comes to hip hop. Mm-hmm. And in the heart of this moment. I don't, I don't think it's bad. I don't think the NBA having their um, their division right now is bad because what it does show is that motherfuckers are not organized. Motherfuckers are not unified. Motherfuckers are not together. And so, like, it's going to force... Been like it's, right, but it's going to force it to happen, though, because, like, you can't be, like, thank God for the sisters. I say God, and I'm an atheist. Well, you know, it's just speaking and talk. Thanks for the... Um, for the um, sisters that started Black Lives Matter and got the movement going, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing but gratitude there. I wouldn't let nobody do nothing bad or say nothing bad about them because they did with the with net. It just depends on their character. Like, if they did something afterwards, then we could criticize it. You know what I mean? They ain't holier than thou. But as far as, like, until we find out something, we hold them up and rep. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what is going to happen. And so I think Cole been like that. I don't take this as, like, something like he disrespected women, but this is what I want to get to. Um, man, like, women have problems with him saying, um, uh, certain terms like queen and so but i just want brothers to be careful on brothers listening man we can't say queen no more you can't say sweetheart um don't use no type of adjective <laughs> or anything to make them on top just go by names bro don't add nothing else no other pronouns no nothing bro don't put nothing else in it just go by. and it's sad you know what i'm saying that the sensitivity is getting up but i'm cool with people telling me what they don't like and what they do like so like I seen a young lady that was an alum from the high school all the other day. And I introduced myself. I talked to her. She talked to me back, asked her when she graduated, asked her when I graduated back. When I left, I almost said goodbye, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I caught myself because we live in a different climate. You can't say nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, have a nice one. And just pivot <laughs> it on out like that. But I caught myself, bro. And it's just like, man, bro, like, and did you ever think that those terms would be looked at like that now? No, I did not. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, I yeah. never thought that those, I mean, that's, <coughs> I respect uh, that they might not be liked, liked anymore, but I never thought, just to answer your question, I never thought that it would come out like like this. Everybody's, uh, I just think, uh, my, my only thing is, if this is the mess, if this if you don't want to be treated like this, and of course we don't, but it has to go both ways or not. We as guys cannot be just taking any old kind of taking taking any. You can't just be 
saying any old kind of thing to us and calling us any old kind of thing, even though we might not care, but the, the situation goes both ways. That's yeah. all I'm saying. It's still about the golden rule, treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. So that's just that's just my that's my that's really my take on it. Or not. So no matters. <laughs> Lord funny stop some oh you did. But um yeah man it's um it's real out here man um I see that it's a big wave changing and young ladies ain't playing and I and I like that. I like the fact that they speaking up and and being vocal and standing their ground yeah. about things. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I got three daughters, bro. That's something you got a daughter, something that we promote. Um, so the conversation tonight was supposed to dive in a little bit more about the black man. And I'm kind of that um J. Cole kind of brought us into that. You know, he was basically saying that um he admitted that he's not doing enough. And I think that's something that black men we don't mind admitting to. Like we never mind doing that. I think somewhere in the conversation gets lost as far as like an explanation for an excuse. And so explanations, you know, basically break down why something happened and your excuse is going to be like the reason to say like, okay, I didn't get to do this and this is because it, it takes over. It, it holds more weight. Like an excuse is explainable. Like it's not explainable, but it's understandable. Like it's like, okay, but explanation should be Taking as not as a means of an excuse. Like if I'm explaining something that I'm doing better, then that's how you should look at it. Now, if I'm still uh, doing, if I'm still doing that same behavior, then I'm taking it as an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's compelling. Like I even went to the dictionary, man, to uh, <laughs> to gather some more information about it because I just wanted to see. Like we have a lot of conversations and within the community about effects from past situations. Now, you know what I mean. And people take it sometimes as um, you use it as an excuse. And it's just like, nah, man, ain't nobody excusing or condoning bad behavior. You know what I'm saying? Or what we might not say is being a man or holding up to certain principles as a man. Um, but ain't nobody perfect. And we're not here to tear down nobody. The only thing I can really do is be that example that I want my brothers to be. And those conversations we have between us, like we have no problem calling each other out on our shits, all of our brothers within our circle, like we'll sit down with each other and all of us will come to one with a problem or issue or to most of us. It's not nothing that we hang up on. We get it done and we move on because we all understand it's for the betterment. And I think within this conversation that we're having now between black men and black women, I don't see enough of that part in between to show that I love you and why you should be taking some of this hard love. You see what I'm saying? Like, if that was shown more, then you can take it more. But when all of the conversation is coming, like, I'm trying to one-up you, I'm trying to down you, I'm trying to read you, or whatever the motherfuckers like to say and shit like that, it get missed out because, like you say, the, everybody's the trying to out-black everybody else. This is what basically what it is. Everybody yeah. trying to out-activist everybody else instead of us working together. Yeah. Um, yeah, we okay. Just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> everybody can't be the leader. <laughs> right. That's the that's the thing too. So everybody's trying to get their voice heard right now, or whatnot. So it's uh we can't just out activist everybody. You know what I'm saying? We can't just out activist each other because in the end we're not working together, we're working against each other, which is actually detrimental to the cause, the movement. This is what they want. So yeah, man. <laughs> man, um, we even so just a few other comments from out there. Um, Ariel asked on Facebook the other day about. You know how she feel about the black man. She said overbeat and underappreciated by every single person. Um, Natalie Robinson said, I would always love my brothers, even though I've been screwed over by so many. I stand, show up, fight always. I love black men. Um, Kara Payton, crazy ex, asked me on <laughs> Instagram, why do niggas overcompensate when they buy condoms? That's just a nice way of putting what she wrote. I don't know. Like, overcompensation is what niggas do. That's a whole nother subject. <laughs> right, right, right. But, you know, man, I think it's kind of hard for brothers to try to speak for all brothers. I can only speak to, like, the hurdles and the things that I've overcame and what I've seen within my circle. Mm -hmm. Like, we've all grown up. I think the fact, especially dealing with, like, me and you, for say, since we've had daughters, like, of course, things have changed. And it's sad to say, man, and it's like, coming up in the environments that we came up in and the culture we came up in, 
we've started to make changes and we started to do things that we didn't see previous before us. And I think you're going to see that get better with generations after. And I can't act like it wasn't their generations before. But ain't nobody perfect, man. I don't think ain't nobody ever going to be perfect, especially if we're looking at it within this lens that we're looking at it now. Like, yeah. just because we do this, all we got to cancel this motherfucker. When they do that, we got to cancel this I'm not looking at Coach's like, like, we motherfuckers talking about casting J. Cole over there. And I'm just like, nigga, he's still worse. Like, stop it. <laughs> I, I was reading comments like, hey, what have you done on the front line? Did the pictures come out like somebody else could pick pictures of him? Like, oh, yeah, he was out there. Like, come on now. I mean, it's so quick to tear each other down. Bro. Yeah. You know, I seen, I seen a post the other day. Oh, so lady, cool. Look, I'm going to tell you how something works. And it, and it works kind of like out of love. I seen a post the other day about a young lady who uh, was talking about Breonna Taylor. And she basically was saying, break down the whole um, situation. Like on one on one picture, then you go to the next picture. Um, she basically had the information that you can do to call in to talk to the people that you need to talk to from the DA to the mayor and shit like that. So with that information, I was able to call in and email in just like we did with George Floyd. This is like we did with Ahmaud Arbery. Like, I think that if you ain't out there in these cities where you need to be protesting that and raising the hell at those cities, like with the Breonna Taylor situation, then you should be making the calls. That's the way that you can move and you can go from your home. Shorty shared that out of love and out of a way to move forward. She didn't have to get on there talking shit about motherfuckers not making the moves that they need to make to do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, she gave a big, she didn't turn nobody off and she pushed it forward. Like, yo, y'all, these motherfuckers still out here. They still not charged. They still going free. Like, what are we gonna do about it? And I think Tone. that brought in people more. Tone, Tone. yeah. Tone. I think so. You can't talk at me. You can talk to me, but you can't talk at me. And yeah, you know man. better than me because you know a little bit more than I know. Like I know <laughs> a lot right. of dumb motherfuckers, right? So right. And I think if we if we all at it on the same thing, man, we all trying to get there. I think that's what we need to do. And, and then brothers too, man, we gotta we gotta watch how we respond. Like it's one thing that I learned just being a man and getting older, bro. You don't have to always motherfucking respond. Like that's one of the things that brothers don't get, I didn't get until I got older. Like sometimes saying okay and just sitting on it is best. Like a lot of times people just wonder how they, they express themselves and get out what they had inside. And they don't always need an answer from you or anything that's combative. So you know, that's one thing, you know, I feel like more brothers, we should learn and not be caught up in our feelings because we are always the ones that's um, held to a higher standard. It's got to like, be strong. It's got to be the bigger person. At all it's, times. It's, 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 yep. it's, it's, it is what it is. And I wouldn't want nothing differently for that for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would always hold myself to that higher standard. I would want that for myself. So, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll knock it, but I, I, you know, I get it though. It's like, how you think it's you're hard, gonna slide? Man. I always have to be the bigger person, bro. I'm just gonna tell you that straight from. It's hard to always have yeah. to and stomach that, you know, just because of the sake of the bigger picture. So, so when you're trying to get that to a through a like an average person, I mean, just a regular person's head or whatnot, mm -hmm. just trying to drill that point to them, it's hard because it's hard to change those ways, especially as you get older. I would not. It's not. It's that. It's not that people caught up in their feelings. It's how you talk. How you. How you talk. How you talk to them, or what not. <laughs> Tone matters. If you come, if I, if you meet somebody where they are, if you can meet us, if, if somebody can meet us where we are, then we're more liable to, to 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 hear your message and act upon it instead of you just talking to me. Instead of you just talking at me, telling me what I should and not. I'm not doing. Yeah, I Crit think that's exactly. not constructive criticism, not just criticism, right? Right. I think that's, but then um, I think Van Gundy, as me, I, I think Van oh, Gundy, wow. Van Gundy summed it up one time I was watching the game and him and Mark Jackson, they be dropping, dropping gems, bro. Like Mark Jackson, and Jeff Van Gundy definitely be dropping gems. Oh, and, uh, and Van Gundy was like, be careful where you get your criticism from. Like, you got to be careful where you get your criticism from. You ain't getting criticism from somebody that you ain't thinking that they doing better than you. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't if you don't look up to that person, you not gonna you don't respect that person, you not gonna you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to be diligent within even within that, learning how and when to, you know, because you can lose yourself getting caught up into what the wrong person gotta say about you. And they're painting a picture on you that have your self-esteem in the motherfucking gutter. So like 
you got to be careful with that. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm all open to criticism, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm one of those, not so much, not to use this with facts, but like it has to A plus B equals C. You have to walk me through. And as men, that's how we are until we come off some shit that we probably don't want to understand. When we ultimately get it, we get it. It ain't no back and forth when we get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's sometimes it's tough for men to get it. Speaking for myself, I can't even lie. It's tough, nigga. Like, I think, um, you know, we about to approach Father's Day and uh, I look at all the mentors I had, bro. Like, I had a lot of mentors. My grandma made sure I was surrounded by a lot of men. Damn, I think we ended on um, IG. Let's see if I can get us back on IG real quick. See if they can put us back in. Sub us back in, coach. Coach. But, uh, but um, yeah, man. They um, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to build on that on the um, conversation about the uh, mentorship, man, and like how we need it. I know people on Facebook probably like, what the hell is going on? We lost our IG people. Piggyback. Just piggyback. Everybody don't have those mentors though. Um, right. Lucky to have a couple of mentors that we had. I had Mr. Jackson, like everybody knows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Also, just help him the, the things that he was trying to teach at the end of the day. I didn't even under, I wasn't even ready to receive the message. And he gave right. it to me the way I needed to be taken, but I wasn't ready to receive the message or not. And that that that's that that's a, that's an impediment too, or whatnot. Some people just don't feel like they in the right place and they in a life to make it, but we gotta put all that to the side. But you, how, how do you get through that though? You can't get through that. Like, how do you get through like when somebody not ready, bro? Like, that's one of those things that's just like really hard to say. Like, when change, when, it, when it's time to change, when change comes, you're never ready. That's mm. why it's change. But what I'm saying is like you said, we gotta get through that. So it's like telling the youngin, you know what I'm saying? What they need to be listening to. But the youngin live in life, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they are they got a reality that's not our reality. You see what I'm saying? It's like yours. Oh uh, damn, did we jump back in? Let me see. It said, it said it would start the video. No, I don't know. Let's see. Let me see, man. We're gonna we're gonna try to get it back right. Back. Wait a minute. It's back live. It's back live. Right now. I'm finna see. I'm gonna go ahead and just re-kick it back off. I'm gonna put a new stream key in or whatever. That's what happens when you when you get to pay for shit. <laughs> you can do that. When you don't pay for shit, you can't do that. No, but uh yeah, we but yeah, man, I think like the mentorship, that's everything, man. Like if you ain't got no positive mentors, then uh you're going to be messed up, bro. Like, you ain't going to have the direction that you need. And it's one thing, you know, we got some great women out here. And I was raised by a lot of great women. Mm-hmm. But the things that shaped my character and made me who I am to stand as a man and come from the men that were in my life. So I had pastors upon pastors. Like, every pastor that was at the church that I grew up in, bro, had a relationship. Like, so from the age that I was... Mm, earliest I can remember about seven, eight was uh, Reverend Williams, Tallulah Williams. Like this woman was amazing, but that was the pastor. But when she left, we had male pastors. So we had Reverend Guest. And Reverend Guest still my friend on my Facebook, my guy, like one of the one of the guys that made sure always that I was straight and I was acting right. Um after him I had Gesselberry, uh, Reverend Gesselberry. I always made sure that I was on point and acting right within the church. Though I think in this one thing, like I said, man, it's funny though that I'm an atheist and I still speak very highly about the black church. The black church is something that's different than than like what we look at, like religion, like um, Mr. Goodwin Duncan, um, Mr. Watlinson, Mr. Triplett, Mr. Crosby, Mr. Armstead. I can go list by list, Reverend Harley. I can go, Mr. Bankhead, bro. I can keep going, mm-hmm. and I I know. Like these cats check in on me. And then within the men of my family, make sure I was straight. But it's a lot of brothers who ain't engaging in certain um, situations where they able to have mentorship yeah. and, be, and be able to, you know what I mean, be loved by the what's the name. So I don't know, man. I think that's one of the major parts of it. And uh, until we get to that point where people can see the impact of that, um, even like my guy like John Easton, like I don't want to leave nobody out. I mean, there's so many people, man, Derek Malone, 
it's so many people, bro, like guys that really just were good examples. Like the dudes weren't perfect. I don't know anything about their personal lives and things like that, but the examples that they showed me was everything. And I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's off your point. Just good, good. I mean, that's what we can be as, as uh, just moving forward. Just be that person. That's how you do your small part. You be that person that mentors somebody else. Help change their lives. Like somebody change, like like all your mentors change, help change yours. Right. That's how y'all can be. That's how you, that's that's part of the move. Or oh, whatnot. <laughs> people don't sign from not to like the crime or whatnot. Because a lot of them people want to like, you know what I'm saying, who join. I don't say I join. A lot of people, a lot of people out there just ain't got nothing. So the only thing that we, you know what I'm saying, we we all together out here ain't got nothing. <laughs> we gonna be out there together with nothing since ain't none of us have anything. Instead of somebody showing them the way and saying, hey, this opportunity is right here if you decide to take it to change your life. All you do is walk through that door. It's not enough It's not enough of that in the community. Yeah. But you know, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to show it and do it. Like, man, like I was, uh, put, I put on Facebook early, one of my mentors, man, every summer, bro came and got me, bro. And, um, he made sure I had the textbook from the previous, like going into the next year. So like the end of freshman year, I had sophomore year textbook as far as with math or whatever. And bro tutored me, man. He made sure I knew what I needed to know. And he gave me game with it. Like he didn't just have me out there like that. So I think, you know, like you say, it's one thing to talk it, but to be engaged and actually be, you know, in these kids' lives, you know what I mean? It's, is one of those things, but you got your own life too. And so that's one of the things where like systems need to be set up more. And like I said, man, I ain't a fan of religion, but uh, the, um, the family structure and the community structure that comes with church and uh, community centers and stuff like that, bro, that's priceless, bro. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. Yeah. You, yeah. You need, you need, you need all that. We need more. And that's what, that's what this whole defund the police movement thing is coming from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as far as putting more of those resources that we give to the police into, uh, into the, the neighborhoods or whatnot. And, so, uh, go ahead. Nah, I was waiting for you to finish. I had another question for you. I'm listening. So, how far does it go as far as like, if we gonna be the change, right? And we gonna be the model of what we wanna see. Um, how much do we hold like other brothers accountable? At what levels do we cut it off? Do we question other brothers activity? Cause I've been seeing that too. Like I've been seeing the young ladies want us to call out brothers for like cheating on girls and doing all type of crazy shit. So like, how do you feel about that? Like I can understand your guys. That's just my opinion. But like, how do you feel about calling out everybody? Like it don't matter. So who the hell are we? The police out of the world? I'm like, but that's what they saying, bro. They saying like, if you know a nigga, like we know of a nigga that's bogus and foul and doing some shit foul, we both will check him. Like you would check me. That's his motherfucking business. <laughs> is they checking is they checking are they fucking girls when they doing girls doing something foul? But this, 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 this I, it this goes both I, ways, bro. I brought that yeah. earlier. It goes yeah. both ways. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Not, but, but it goes both ways. We cannot you know, see somebody just you can't just be out here policing people, people's uh emotions and what every, everything somebody's doing. Yeah, I mean, in, in in essence, you be saying everybody needs to be perfect, which they're not, or not, and you go through things, and you go through things, and you cheat and do all all type of good stuff. I'm not not saying all type of things, not saying anything that's wrong, cheating and uh, domestic violence, not because none of that is none of that is is right. Right. There are lessons to be learned from going through things like that. So a better person. Potentially. So I I remember a situation me and you were both in. We were um we were on the bus. This is like back and like right after high school. And um I remember the dude was hitting on the girl on the bus, and me, you, and the other brother was on the back of the bus. You remember the swole dude in the tank top? Yeah. yeah I know yeah. you. I know you remember this. So and we was all saying we talking shit to bro and getting ready to wild up or whatever. And homegirl was basically like making excuses for bro. You know what I'm saying? Like. Nah, y'all, nah, nah, nah. At the end of it, buddy in the tank top whooped the homeboy ass. <laughs> and Shorty was begging for him to stop. You see what I'm saying? Like, dude was disrespecting her. We all said something. 
Buddy and the tank top bruh still had words after everything was going on. Buddy and the tank top would do that off the bus. When we was on the night, I know you remember this, bro. We was on the 95 bus. Yeah. And so, like, when you got people out here that still choose to go back, that's one of those situations where you look at you be like, man, I could say something, I could get involved, but it might not look always work out best for me. And what I'm trying to get to happen ain't gonna be until you ready to stop fucking with this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, uh, it's one of those things, yeah, man. Even the message before I can even before I can even tell you. If I'm telling you, I can tell you the message all day, but if you're not ready to hear the message, it's not it comes on dead ears. Yeah. Somebody close to her would have had this this example. Somebody close to her, closer to her, not y'all. Somebody closer to her would have like, come on now, this is not right for you. You gotta come to where people are. So you talk, you know what I'm saying? You get your message to people that that might that 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 might be close to a person like that so they can be able to tell them. And they listen to them. As opposed yeah. to y'all, they listen to y'all. She don't know y'all flies for shit. Right. I think man, y'all was our business. I Even though it wasn't right, it wasn't the right situation. It wasn't right. It wasn't right at the time for her situation. Right. I think, that's, I think that's. I think that's too much. I think it's certain levels when you get into people personal things, and I think like you should just be the example. Yeah, I think I think you should definitely be the example that you want to see, and like just set the proper example, like. You never know what people got going on in their situations. And for you to really make a call or a judgment, you would have to know their business. And that ain't right. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's what I'm saying. You still don't know. So it's just like, just fall back from that shit. That shit don't even matter. It's more like, you know, where can we go? And it's like, I ain't doing that. You know what I mean? Like, look at the lights. I don't like to look in the darkness. I like to look at the light. You know what I mean? Like, who are the role models? Like, you look at like a, a Will Smith and a Jada Pinker. You know what I mean? Like, that's black love and black excellence that like we like to see, you know what I mean? But they real as hell. Like they not fake or phony about their relationship. Like yeah. things are what it is and what it ain't. Um, I think people don't look at that and have a, a realistic look at things. They have like a um, fairy tale. Yeah. Like 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 you say, a lifetime channel or some shit that they want to see come come true or some shit like that. And that ain't gonna always be the case. What you drinking on tonight, bro? Man, you know, I still got my real thing, man. I was drinking on it earlier, man. I was man, drinking. Drink. I still got the Douce and I still got the damn Stella Ciders. I'm telling y'all, fuck with these Stella Ciders. $10 for a six pack. You should be able to sell. <laughs> make them so much money. You gonna make them so much money. Or oh, not. That shit good, though. But yeah, man, here at the Nightcap, man, we like to drink. We like to talk shit. We still putting out this invitation for y'all to come on and come and talk y'all shit. Um, we got some uh, tricks and surprises coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, next week, we're going to have the fellas come on, have the fellas talk about, you know, like the state of the black woman. Now, I know it's going to be some shit because I know we're going to have the fellas on next week. The fellas is not going to not show up and come on here and show out. So that's going to be some shit in itself. So I'm ready for it. I hope you're ready for the smoke on that. Oh, um, it ain't too much else, man. I was going to drive into some numbers um, about the black man, but that really ain't going to do us no justice. Like I said, um, you know, I think one of the best things that we can do is be the examples that we want to be. No, we're not perfect. Let's own up to our mistakes. Yeah. Just try to you try to do better, man. Right. No excuses. Hold, us, hold yourself. With, you know what I'm saying? A lot of situations that we place us, a lot of situations that we find ourselves in, if we really look at it, if we really look at it, uh, it's something that we did <laughs> yeah. to put up. To, not the coronavirus thing. You say, like, you know, you know, oh my God, I ain't doing deserve do anything. You can look my job. Of course. But a lot of the things that we get in, that we, that we put, a lot of situations that we're in, some way, some shape, some some way, shape, some way, some shape, some form, I want to put it. We had something to do with why we're there or we're not. And easy as, as soon as we can recognize that and become self aware, we can start making the changes to get us out of the situation or we're not. But you got to have, before you can hold anybody else accountable, just please hold yourself accountable. And that makes everything better. Do you think it's getting better? As far as the accountability issue on our part? I mean, like just jet black people in general. Like, do you think like we climbing upwards? Or do you think it's like standing still? Do you think it's going down? How do you think about the state in general, even like with the black men? Do you, do you think it's more brothers winning now or more brothers declining or losing? I think we are in a moment, or we're not. 
Mm-hmm. We can see if we can so, find even gauge it, even gauge even gauge it before the pandemic. Like I know I can say like me growing up, bro, out of the fathers that I knew, they weren't as active as our clique as far as the fathers. You see what I'm saying? So to me, I see a vast improvement. I can't say that I can look throughout my friends and find guys who are not active in their kids' lives. Now, a clear- But we come, um, we come from a generation where we know the 80s, right? And we yeah. just with that. So yeah. a lot of our fathers went in our lives. Or right. Not. So when I had Kaya, when I, it was kind of like me and, you know what I'm saying? And see, we had a conversation, and it was like, in my mind, it was like, I just wanted to break this cycle, right? And it's right, it's just I wanted to break this cycle and not be and, and just not not be the be the guy that won't be there for his kid. I don't want I didn't I, I never wanted Kyle to not know who her daddy is, right? So because I because I was in that boat. I knew he was, but it's like he wasn't there. Right. So I, I never want to put my child in that. And there's a lot of fathers out there that feel that way. Because they didn't have one or something happened and they ended up getting raised by the grandma who however it happened. Or when right. I, and they father wasn't there to guide them and lead them. And you don't want to do that to your child. You don't want to you want to break that cycle. And that's part of being the chain. Or not. Because that's a lot that goes into a lot of what's going on in our communities is the uh is the broken families, the broken homes or whatnot. Or even like structure, like I think no structure. If- Right. I think even if you got if you got active parents, even if you co-parent and that works too, like it does, but man. you gotta be there. That's right. The thing. It's like, like I back in the day, if you had co parent, they wasn't gonna be there anymore. It's just gonna be lit. No. Right, right. But you you, know, you got internet now, niggas gonna put you on blast quickly. <laughs> but you know, man, like I had a, a whole village, right? I had a whole village, bro. And I know that, like, and that's why I was mentioning earlier, like I think that's one of the main things that we got to also keep in mind. Like, though parents try their hardest, a parent can be having a lot on their plate where certain attention is needed to your child and the child can't get it. You know what I mean? The parent might not even be knowledgeable of certain situations that the child is dealing with. This child, the attention. You know, you know, even with me, like I said, man, me getting older, like these authoritative ways that I knew. I had to kind of like come up off of because it stunts your kid from being able to express themselves and grow. And so if it's like that, like when Cole said in the song, you got to treat like a kid. It's like that with a kid. It's definitely going to be like that with an adult. Kids ain't nothing but young adults, bro. Like when you make it to a point where somebody don't feel like they can open up, be expressive and open without you being judgmental or talking to a certain point where you get on them harsh, even between us, we shut down. Like, it's been time where the bros been trying to tell me something. And just the pitch and the way and the tone, like you were saying, was coming at me. I'm like, bro, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, you got to meet me at the level that I'm at, especially if I'm not even there. You know what I mean? You care You care enough to mention the shit, care enough to bring it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think that's part of it. Otherwise, it's still... Like, make me understand. Like, yeah. Who gonna be the bigger person? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you being the bigger person by telling me this shit, then be the bigger person. Like, don't cut it off, you know what I'm saying? And I, I find myself doing that. That's a lot of times why I use, you know, bro say I use a lot of intelligent arguments and shit. Like, you like, he go bro with this intelligent shit again. But I use those things so you don't have to say that I'm talking over you or trying to make you feel what I feel. We gonna talk it point by point. And so yeah. we can both come to this realization of what it is. Now, I may not be right in, in most, in this, um, in this process of going through this dialogue, we might come to a conclusion at the end of it that you're right. But at least we went through it step by step and we wasn't bickering and yelling at each other and shit like that. So that's more the thing. And I try to do that with everybody. That shit can be annoying as fuck, bro, because you be in your emotions. You know what I'm saying? It is. But right. it's, it's about self-awareness, though. You know, once you're self-aware, you can yeah. see. You know how this goes. Yeah. Self-aware, you can kind of see what's going on. As the words coming out of your mouth and, you know what I'm saying, you, and you listening, going back and forth, if you're sitting there, you're actually present in a moment, you can see what's going on, see them and, and kind of think two, three steps ahead as you're talking in that real live conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Just being self-aware and being able to just be accountable for the thing. Cause you can't, you can't and not work because you can't 
put like this and not worry about the things that you don't control or whatnot. You, you only control what you control, which is your actions and how you react to things that are said and done to you and how you uh, and what you do to, and say to other people. That's the only thing that you can control or whatnot. So once you become self-aware and accountable for those actions and everything that you do within your control, then you're ready to deliver your message and also ready to receive one because you're you're aware and open to 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 uh, I don't even want to say criticism, but a, a discussion of things that you could change or that you want to see changed in somebody else. That's definitely so, man. It's um. It's some crazy shit, bro, that we want to see, like, a quick fix to all this shit. And I don't think it's ever going to be... Get it quick, you lose it quick. I, yeah, I really don't. It's time ago. Get it, what you get quick, you lose quick. Yeah, I don't think that's going to ever be the case. So, like, we dealing with generations. Like, I was having a conversation the other day, and, like, one thing that I don't see as much as I used to see when coming up is teen pregnancy. Like, like, bro, I don't see that shit no more. Like, it's, it's like motherfucking handbag. It's still out here. Bro. I know it's it's out here, but what I'm saying is that I don't see it as rampant as I saw it before. You know what I mean? And when you go check the, the it's the education now, right? Right. Like, so even the generations of the girls on now, we're not going to be on this. And even even a generation of team moms that you've seen a lot of them, um, their generations after them didn't repeat the cycle. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And I think um, I think that's what we kind of end. It's like some people who didn't fall victim to the crack epidemic or the war on crime and different policies that was put out there that really targeted our people. They don't really understand the plight of it. Like, I can speak to it. Like, the war on drugs, my family, man, hell motherfucking yeah. Like, hell mother on both sides as far as using and selling. Mm -hmm. Hell motherfucking yeah. Like, stunning so many because it was the quickest opportunity to be able to prosper. You know what I mean? Yes. Man, I know people who was in situations where they were getting government benefits and working, bro, but didn't take the money to, like, do anything else because they had an addiction. You see what I'm saying? So, like, bro, like, that's a mind state. Like, look, I'm going to hustle, I'm going to grind, but then I'm addicted because this shit is out here. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to say don't use, say no to drugs, right? Yeah, that blunt campaign, that breaking right. the Right, but if, if this your coping mechanism... Uh -huh. If this is your coping mechanism and you know somebody has been through a traumatic experiences and it's happening and there's been a systematic scheme to put motherfuckers through shit, you're going to find that. Like yeah. people, we drinking right now on leisure. We're not drinking because we got problems and all this shit coming down us and shit like that. But people have nightcaps and they chill out and shit like that. So when you got drugs out there, that's going to be like that. People are going to be subjective and they pick up a drug and they're going to pick their different vices. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. to act like one's better than the other, bro, when it comes down to this shit, to think like people are just going to switch up and like they're not going to be affected by generations from the traumatic experiences that came oh, from before, sorry. it's bullshit. My kids still feel the shit that happened for my grandparents. Facts, bro. My kids feel the effects from what my grandfather did. Say less. <laughs> right, bro. That shit crazy. Like, they ain't got shit to do with it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But, like, if we don't check some shit or get help and move in certain areas and watch out for certain shit, they'll carry on bullshit that came from that generation. Yeah, certain things permeate generation from generation to generation. Absolutely right. But, but people expect shit just to snap, and it don't happen like that. Mm -hmm. Like, it, just be real with me. Within your generation and your family, not to use education as a um, as a um, metric to level somebody or judge somebody, but is there a lot of motherfuckers who went to college and graduated? No. 
Is it a lot of niggas that went to college but didn't finish? Not even no. <laughs> like I can speak to my family. Like that though. Listen, I can speak to my family. I can speak to my family. Like certain generations and certain people before you had a few, but then as you got older, you uh, different generations. You had those who went but didn't finish. But then mm -hmm. the generations after me, you had them off. They they killing that shit. They going through. They smashing that shit. They getting everything that they need to get and they own and they move. Yeah. Like my, I got a little cousin that went to Morehouse. This little nigga, man, not to call he hate the word nigga. They family they hate the word nigga, but not to say that. But this little dude, this little dude, amazing, bro. And I remember him like, yay high, like yeah. you saw. Um, and it's just so crazy, bro, to like to see where he yet. And I'm looking at the generation. I'm just like, they own business. And I'm looking at myself, and I'm just like, okay, I'm on my grind. And it's just but like, he doesn't the back. He doesn't off the back of of, of something else. Uh, he, like, right. He's stepping on shoulders right. of something greater to be. I mean, he's stepping on the shoulders of great to be something great. Just and, and trust me, this the support system that he had. Push. The support system that he had under him, boy, they don't play. They ain't play no games. And that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Right. Right. Even the like, definitely like strong women and strong men in their family to um push him to that point. And even for him to have the grind and the determination to do what he did. So like, bro, I look at that and I sit back and I'll be like, man, like we gotta start setting the example, setting the example. But it's still gonna take generations and generations on to get to a point where grandma and all 15 of her grandbabies got degrees. Like my grandma had 19 grandkids. Like, <laughs> I'm not even gonna put the number out who got degrees. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's not even so much about degrees, but like who own businesses, who taking care of themselves, who living right, who good. And like I said, man, the impact of the um, drugs from the 80s and 90s hit my family real hard. I can definitely speak to that. So like I said, it's people out there who can't speak to it and they take it as an excuse. It's like, shit, your mama wasn't on the crack rock, so you don't know, shit. <laughs> Like, that's real that's, shit. People's, but like I said, through, through all, every time through life, you know what I'm saying, it's an opportunity for you to do, to take a path where you could do better. I have better. Right. So, I believe a lot of people get that opportunity at least once early on. But how, how do you, how do you know what's how better you know, though? I know, I know. How do you know when that opportunity, how do you know when? No, how do you know what's better? How do you know if it's an even opportunity in front of you? Scales, scales. How do you how do you tell a young nigga? Well, not the same to say young. Let me start changing my language. How do you tell a young brother that, man, you can go to school for four years and grind and work jobs and do all this versus getting some paper in an hour or fifteen minutes? You show them. You basically you be you be that you be that you be that change. You you show them like if they look. How many people believe actually believe they could be the president? Black black guys, black black people actually believe they could be the president before actually seeing it, right? So if you if you setting that example already, that's the choice. That's the choice, right? Yeah, I okay. can pretty fast, but, but how I was this how end up like that? Nobody has the but, foresight. But that's see? what I'm saying. So how do you get them like to see that, bro? Like that's what I'm saying. Like you guys, you you got certain people with a certain mindset that they're stuck in that they won't they won't really pull out of until they're ready so i don't know somewhere in my thinking is that you don't really focus on that you focus on the change like you say or the people that's about the productivity that you want to be the mainstream like it's so many kids every year that graduate high school early you see what i'm saying and i see it like on facebook as i'm scrolling and shit like that but these ain't the things that we highlight, bro. I, I take a look at just like my regular posts. If I post some shit that's like silly or funny, it'll get some reaction. If I post some shit that's like educational, it gets, mm. you see what I'm saying? Right. It's like, we don't have a conscience to be focused on the things that's relative to us. And I don't know if that's built in and you know how, and this hate to like take it that way, but how, some of the white columnists and analysts were saying, like, keep the protests out of football because it's our safe space. Mm -hmm. I think people enjoy their safe space. So, yeah. like, when it comes to certain shit, they don't even want to touch on it. Like, you know, we dealing with um, with change now, and um, we got a lot more shit that we need to get rid of. Like, we look, a lot of people when that um, donations came out, they were looking at it like, oh, thanks, thanks. But now you got a lot of people that see it and like, hold on, hold on. 
this might be some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like that reading of the line is one of the things that I think we need to uh, be able to get to, like don't get caught up on the glitz and the but let's stay really focused. And I really see the movement like shifting, like everybody was pro black and get change or destruction, no justice, no peace, like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. that, that shit ain't the same no more. Yeah, that's the media cycle. And that's the thing. You gotta keep, you gotta keep, you gotta keep being out here. You gotta keep fighting or whatnot. Uh, and I'm not saying that you have to be out there processing every day, but anything you could do, it's on a normal, it's just on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. We, we got to get out of improved lives. We got to get out of this. We are, we say we we reside in an individualistic society, but when we get to the point where we think about how can I make my, how my not only my life but some the lives of people around me better, and then that's when you see the togetherness and the unity will finally come about. It's just all about how we looking at it in our perception. Someone does this all the time, just about perception or whatnot, and. What we perceive to be true and 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 real and safe, that's not always the case. I would not. So we have to we have to, uh, like you said, really be careful about uh, going for the shiny object, basically, because that's usually usually what comes out every every week or every couple of weeks in, in in the news cycle, and just stay on it and stay on our purpose as far as like getting the, the change that we as a people want, and stop letting small things. And negativity, going from the J. J Cole, the way they're trying to make it negative, divide us and take our eyes off the prize of what we're truly trying to achieve, or we're not. I can't help. I can't help anybody if I'm not being the best man that I could be. Yeah. And that's why I was talking about the accountability, right? So if you're being the best man you could be, and I'm being the best man I could be, then I could go be the best man I could be to somebody else and help them be the best man or woman that they could be, or we're not. Because I got experience and stuff to, I got experience to, to draw off of. You see, I'm being the best man I could be because I'm showing you that I am. Yeah. So. But that don't take away certain things. Like, I think a lot of therapy is needed in our community, man. Like, I got, I received therapy when I was younger. And I think um, that's what allowed me not to rage and go out of control when emotions hit. You know what I mean? Like, I used to go play basketball, I draw. Like, that's what my counselors taught me what to do find activities to, to turn it into. And I think we don't do that. Like we don't have those. That's not like a cool thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember I remember even growing up, bro. And this is just like a difference. And it's not to take this conversation too far off, but it just show you like when you do certain things that's right, when people mentality not right, they judge you in bad ways. Like um, they used to tell me I talk white when I was growing up. Me too. But you tell you sound like you sound like a white boy. And they're just like Fuck, bro. Like, I just want to be understood when I talk. Like, <laughs> fuck. Like, this is the way I was taught. Like, I'm glad they taught me this way. You know what I mean? So, when you write and you just stand and you just be the person that you just be on your your purpose and on your your uh your beliefs, and when you write, shit starts to come around. Yeah. I'm, Captain, but, I'm like, he was right, but now it's finally starting to come around. Now everybody want to be on the side of us. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's just crazy. Oh, but like I said, man, that's all BS. They they ain't said that man name. They fucked up with that. They did. I'm saying like this the whole, man name. <laughs> the whole all of a sudden everybody, everybody want to take a knee now, right? So right, even the politician is taking knees. Like yeah, come on now. That's that's crazy. But yeah, that's another thing, man. Uh, the house trying to hold up the uh, the new legislation for the police oh, reform oh. and shit. <laughs> ah, Tim Scott. Bullshit. Let me see if I can find this video, man. Because yeah, this me. shit was because this shit was good. Hold on, let me see something real quick. Which video are we referring to? I got you, man. Hold on for a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it, bro. That will everybody. But uh, Tim Scott, the Republicans gonna put him out there to be the face of police reform for the Republican side. For the for the yeah for the side of the Republicans, I think it's really funny. <laughs> Why you say that? Just, be, just because, I mean, just, I feel like the top, the, the bill that they putting out is really just Republican talking points as in regards to police reform or whatnot. It's, it's basically 
tra- transformation for preservation, right? Okay. It's just like, we gonna change a little bit or make it seem like we changing a little bit and reform a little bit to preserve the overall culture of the police, you know what I'm saying, of, of what's going on. I'm not even gonna say the police, of what's going on, period. But in this particular case, police, a police reform. All of those right. resolutions, all of, all of those, those uh, the band on, bro. Rules, the no knock one, all that's voluntary. And they're gonna give you grants and incentivize you if you do these things. Okay. They're not telling you, they're not mandating that you do these things. They're just incentivizing you and suggesting that you do these things or whatnot. As opposed to the House bill, where, that it's the House bill, which is more, more, a little more progressive, that tells the hey, A, these are the demands. This is what we need. We need <laughs> we need a police commission. We need no, a ban on no knock warrants. We need the ban chokeholds, period, or we're not. You know, we need a national database so police can't uh, go get jobs in other precincts. We just, the whole thing it was much more, it had more teeth in it than the Republican plan. And to see Tim Scott out there uh, just pushing it. And like, <laughs> <laughs> as if he's, he, <laughs> As if the Republicans say, "Hey, those are your people. You, you it, it'll come. It'll look better coming from you as a police reform plan." You know, what I'm it's just it's a slap in the face. Right? Man, what I'm trying to pull up the Cedric Richmond video, so we about to play it real quick, because I think like this is one of the dopest things I've seen. Man, like black folks is not playing, bro. Like literally, bro. Like I'm about to play this. Hold on, let me see if I can get it set up. But this brother, uh, representative, he uh, he snapped out, man. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna get it set up for us in one second. Let me see. Bro. All right, cool, cool, cool. Cause this is letting me know, like, like what you saying, man? They on some BS. Cause you they doing already, what man. they doing, man? Like, it's it, it, pa- it got it, it, it got through the Senate too quick, bro. Yeah, what? It got through the Senate too quick, bro. Like <laughs> the Senate is the Senate is Republican. You know who right. all, all right, let's make sure that we got the screen up. You see it on your screen, bro? Yeah, I see it. We gotta make right. sure we get what we want. Not what not just gonna take some bill just because we just wanna have something done. All you know, right, yeah. don't gotta take that. Get what here, you want. Here you go, bro, though. Let's do it. I am absolutely sitting here offended and angry as hell. And I want to explain to my, what we always say is how we refer to each other, my good friends on the other side. By the time I'm finished, you will be clear that we are not good friends. I am not interested in moving at a snail's pace. I am not interested in a watered down bill that mandates nothing. Thank you. I'm not interested in studying Antifa. I'm not even interested in studying the Klan or sovereign citizens right now. Because that is not the imminent threat that black men face on a daily basis. And right now, too often, it is law enforcement. Those who were sworn to protect and to serve. And so all we're asking today is to deal with that. I don't mind dealing with other pieces of legislation. I don't mind dealing with other issues that you all may have. And and what I don't want to leave this conversation with and why I'm speaking now instead of later is because I don't want you all to leave here saying, well, we didn't know. We didn't know that's how you felt, Cedric. I want it to be crystal clear and I will give you the benefit of the doubt that it is an unconscious bias that I'm hearing because at worst it's conscious bias and that I would hate to assume from any of the people on the other side. Will the gentleman yield? Sure. I appreciate your passion are you suggesting that you're certain that none of us have non-white children? Be- because you, you reflected on your black son and you said none of us could understand. Matt, Matt, stop. I'm not about to get sidetracked about the color of our children. We're talking no, about said, black kids. I reclaim my time. You said that- no, I reclaimed my time. I know- you want the discussion? I know the that- gentleman, you want a bill? gentleman reclaimed his time. I said I claim, reclaimed my time. I already know that there are people on the other side that have uh, black grandchildren. It is not about the color of your kids. It is about black males, black people in the streets. 
How do you that are getting killed. And if one of them happens to be your kid, I'm concerned about him too. And clearly I'm more concerned about him than you are. Oh. So, so let's be clear you're, about you're that. Claiming, so you're claiming you're I more am, concerned for my family than I do? Who in the hell do you gentlemen, think you are? Gentlemen, <laughs> if the shoe fits. <laughs> you don't know how much the we care about will families. Kick this is dog outrageous. Holla. You should take those words down. The I the know you care about your family and love your family. The gentleman week, will suspend. It. The gentleman will suspend. The time belongs to the gentleman from Louisiana. Just you the whole subject matter. I'm like, come on. Like. You knew exactly what the fuck he knew exactly what the fuck he was talking about when he when he said. But that's oh, it. I got a black friend or I got black. I'm with the no. You're still missing the point. He's still missing the point. Oh man, that was hilarious, bro. He killed us that, bro. It, 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 it just highlighted it highlighted this this notion that uh just that, that they don't know, right? So. Yeah. That's where the education come in, at. and it's just like so. If you don't know, I'm here to to educate you and to then let you know what it is, what's going on. That way we can have a discussion. But you can't just sit there and try to sidetrack me on something completely irrelevant to what's to what to what I'm saying or what not. Hey. He was really upset when he said he know <laughs> he cared more about his kids than he do because <laughs> clearly, <laughs> if you got black kids, you know how this go. Hey, oh, how does go? That man went hard, man. That shit was funny as hell. Hey, he he got a new. I'm checking for bro now, for sure. He like, did, man, bro. Oh, that shit. And it all started over that watered down ass bill that the Senate trying to pass through, or what not? You know, what I'm just, I'm right? You More pen. You just can't get in front of. Now you can't get behind. Not front of. You can't get behind. No pen. Not doing this, man. This is crazy. No pandering. Hey, didn't you say you didn't check the um Stephen A. Smith and um Stephen Jackson? You didn't hear what Stephen Jackson had to say? Yeah, I didn't hear what Stephen Jackson had to say. I heard about it, but I didn't hear it like face to face. Um, I'm gonna see if I can try to get it for you. Man. Let's see. So Stephen A. Smith had his little spiel. Yeah, y'all, we kind of right now um, doing a lot of you know, freestyling. What's the name kind of done for the night? So if y'all still on with us, we just going to be doing some more chats and a little small discussions or just previous posts. Well, not previous, but future posts. So they're kicking in. I guess we can stay on, bro, so we finish. What you got left, man? You got to pull it up something? Yeah, I got a little, I got, I'm coming up on the corner, so. All right, hold on. All right, so I'm gonna get you, uh, get you set in real quick. Let's go ahead and put this up real quick. Yeah, I, didn't, right. I didn't see, but I, I can agree with what you're saying, though. I was checking you out, my brother. I see what you just said, but let me give you a little game. One, you can't tell a man what to fight for. Two, us as the blacks, we never had this moment. And I've heard that from people that's been fighting for us to be equal for 50 plus years. I've heard our day mouth say we've never had this moment. So why not take advantage of it? Maybe Kyrie understands this moment. We've never had this moment. So we got to take advantage of it. There's no way a game is more important than police killing us. Yeah, it's been going on a long time, Stephen A. Yeah, it's been going on a long time. But how long are we going to continue to let it go on? How long are we gonna be comfortable with just existing? I know it's higher ups that's talking. A black man shouldn't be saying that. Oh, I don't think he should have threw the black man comment in. Yeah. Could play, I could play the video for you when Stephen A responded, but that really ain't. Because we got different opinions, don't mean that we got to go against each other. As you know, like, D didn't have to throw the black per the black man uh, comment in. He just had a difference of opinions and left it at that. Right. And oh. Stephen A responded back kindly. He didn't like come at him, but he did was firm on his like, yo, like, don't come at me like motherfuckers telling me what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's what I'm saying. Their conversation back and forth, they're still able to get something across that I don't see when um when male and females talk to each other, bro. 
like that's why I think that conversation was like it spans across a lot of the topics that we was talking about tonight. Like they were serious about their points. They didn't back down from their points. They didn't coddle each other when they were talking to each other. Mm-hmm. They respectively disagreed and left space for the next for the next person to come back to have something to say in response. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's where it's at. Like Stephen Jackson respects Stephen A. Smith. They got a relationship. You know what I'm saying? They probably ain't buddy buddy and all that shit, but they worked with each other before, which we've seen. He didn't right. did his show, then return favor and did all Stephen A. Smith and did all the smoke. And as far as the OGs, which Stephen A. Smith will put in there and Stephen Jackson will put in there, because they both older than Stephen A. Jackson ain't that much older than us. He's like a big brother. Stephen A. Smith is older than us. Like, yeah, Stephen Smith. Oh, yeah. But you know, it's still a level of respect that was given to each side. You see what I'm saying? Like Durant came out and called Kendrick Person Perkins a coon. You see what I'm saying? Well, now what do you call him? Not a sellout, not a coon. You call him a sellout. So like that's disrespectful. You see what I'm saying? Like Stephen Jackson threw his jab and it was like a black man shouldn't be saying that. You see what I'm saying? But so that's a jab, but it's still the vision, the, the vision that we all taught to have. Exactly. So like he didn't say it di- directly towards him. He kind of threw it subliminal, subliminally, but it still was done out of respect. That's why he did it like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it still led for Stephen A. Smith to be able to come back without fuck you, Stephen Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Tone. Tone. Tone's everything, man. You know, he, that, but that's he, he came at Stephen A. Smith the way that Stephen A. Smith come at people. He met right. him. Yeah. Stephen A. Smith, like that tone would have some people feeling like, man, who the fuck you talking to like that? You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. that's Stephen A. Smith could take that because that's what he dish out. And that's what yeah. I'm saying. Go if you can take it, if you can get it, you can get it, you gotta be able to take it. And it's all about tone. He met Stephen A. Smith where he's at. Stephen A. They could talk like that because they've yeah. already talked like that, like you said beforehand. Or yeah. not. And I, I think I think that's one thing with brothers, man, that we do with each other. Like we can have hard conversations with each other and then not turn to nothing else. Like, yeah. But, but you got cats who ain't built like that, who don't know where that come from. Like we still from a generation of the toughness, of the tough love. You know what I'm saying? The, Fuck your feelings, love. Like, I'm here to be your parent and not your friend, love. And uh, a lot of cats don't have that in them, man. Even for my generation, a lot of cats didn't have it in them because they didn't have, when I can speak to the men, I'm not going to speak to the guys. Like, they didn't have that in their house to show them how to do that, who dealt with that, who was able to put them through it. And I did. Like, I got five male cousins that was around me growing up that, man, I mean, shaped everything about me. Like, I still do to this day. Like, you know, don't nothing change. We just older now. I, I think I'm my own, but what they say about me matters. When they come at me or they say something to me, it matters because All right. that's just what we had set up. And everybody ain't got that. So it's one thing, bro, like to sit back and to see like how those guys dealt with each other. And we talk about, they talk about black men and like the lack of what we do with the shit like that. Like, is there like motherfuckers will not be perfect they're not going to be perfect we're not going to ever be perfect bro it's always going to be some bs on place and i think people need to get over that because that's an individual's life that's my life you know what i'm saying that's your life whatever your experiences and situations you've been through is going to dictate what you do and how you operate and the person that you end up becoming right so i can't hold you to it my standard, but it is a standard that we say, hey, we don't hurt people. That's one thing that we say. Now, that's subjective. Hurt to different people is different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. some people can get away with certain things and people, other people be like, you don't even know you hurt her. She don't even know you hurt her. You don't even know you hurt her. You know what I mean? Like, that ain't no you. You know what I'm saying? If you love somebody and you want to convey it, that's cool. But to feel like you got to like pump it down them and make them feel like how you feel, that's something different within the conversation, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I don't know what's going on, man. I thought it was still live streaming on uh, IG, but no, I guess I, I told you that never came back up. No, I put it back up, but oh. it's like it seemed like it's frozen. 
Nah, that's back right. Okay. You on that now too? Yeah. But yeah, bro, ain't much too much to it, man. Um, I don't know, man. Next week, I wonder how the fellas come on. Fellas, come on, talk y'all junk, man. I already know it's gonna be lit. I already know. We actually went over this week, bro. We had like an hour and thirty right now. Yeah, we did. Nice long conversation. Talk right. About- oh. We wanted to say what's up to Jermaine, Jermaine Vivetta. We call that man Vivetta. We used to call him Velveeta. Hey, man, thanks for serving the country, too, bro. We appreciate it, man. That man definitely in the service. Y'all got heart that I don't have for that shit. That's love. Yeah. There's a benefit to it, though, too. <laughs> benefit to it, too. All right, man. Well, I'm about to jump off, bro. Man, it was a pleasure to talk to you this week, man. We back at it next week. Always a pleasure with you, brother, man. Any advice y'all got for us, definitely let us know. We all here for it. But all right, bro, I'm about to um, go ahead and shut everything down. Peace and love. You already know. Peace out. Peace. Peace.